So if I could just get a few of your details. Um, what was your full name? Frank Smith. And your date of birth? 1st of January 1999. And your occupation? Summer student. Great. Um, so, and were you Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander origin? No. No, okay. Um, so today I've been asked by your doctor to perform an abdominal exam on you. Um, so that'll just involve looking at different parts of your um, upper limb, your face, your chest and your abdomen, just to assess how the health of your gut is going. Um, in order to do this examination, it will require you to take off your shirt. Um, but does all of that sound okay with you? Yeah. Fantastic. So would you be happy to get started? Yeah. Great. So I'll start off by having a look at you first, and I'll be reporting back to the examiner as I go, but feel free to ask me if you have any questions. So looking at you at rest, it doesn't seem like you're currently in any pain or discomfort. You seem to have a normal mentation and a normal body habitus. Um, having a closer look at your skin in particular, there's no yellowing, so no jaundice. Um, and there's also no darkening or bronzing of the skin, such as in hemochromatosis. Um, I'll just check a few things in terms of your hydration status. If you could just stick out your tongue. Yeah, and I'll just uh, pull on your skin at the back of your hand if that's okay. Yeah, so there's normal skin turgor um, and mucous membranes aren't dry. So it seems like a normal hydration status as well. So now moving on to having a look at your hands. Um, so first of all, I'm not noticing any abnormal um, spoon-shaped nails, such as coiling it here. There are some white blemishes on the surface of your nails, um, which could be leukemia, but I'd have to correlate that with other signs during this examination as well. I'll flip over your hands. Um, so don't seem to be particularly flush, so there's no palmar erythema. And it doesn't feel like there's any obvious Dupuytren's contracture, which might be a sign of increased alcohol intake. Um, I'll just get you to put your hands out in front of you. So there doesn't seem to be any hepatic flap that would be present in hepatic encephalopathy. Um, I'll just push back. Yeah, so still no flap. And I'll get you to put your fingers together like this for me. So there doesn't seem to be any clubbing either. So I'll now move on to having a look at your face. So first of all, your eyes. Do you mind if I moved your lower lids? If you could just look up for me. Yeah, so there's no palate of the conjunctiva, which means there's no um, clinical anemia at least. Um, the whites of the eyes are still white, so there's no jaundice, and there are no chysoflasherins either, so that there's no sign of Wilson's disease at this point. Um, and there's also no xanthelasma. Um, I'll just have a look at your mouth, so just stick out your tongue. Yeah, so no halitosis or bad breath, seemed like dentition was fine, um, and there wasn't any glossitis. Looking around the mouth, there's no angular stomatitis either. So having a look at your face before, there didn't seem to be any parotid gland or submandibular gland enlargement. Do you feel sore here or underneath here? No. Okay, I'll also have a feel. Still not sore at all? Great. I'll move on to feeling your cervical lymph nodes. So do you have any abnormal lumps or bumps around your neck area that you've noticed? Okay. So I'll start off with submental. Submental. Tonsillar. Preauricular. Postauricular. And occipital. And then I'll just get you to look to your right, deep cervical, and then look to your left, also deep cervical, and just look straight ahead, superficial cervical, and then posterior cervical. Could you shrug your shoulders for me? So supraclavicular lymph nodes seem fine, especially the left, which would be your cow's node. If there was something there, that would be indicative of a GIT malignancy, but it seems all normal. So maybe on having a look at your arms as well as your chest. Um, so, once again, it doesn't seem like there's any yellowing of the skin or bronzing of the skin as seen in jaundice or hemochromatosis. Um, there's no abnormal bruising, so no ecchymoses or petechiae or purpura, um, and no scratch marks, so potentially no pruritus has been experienced. Um, I'm not noticing any gynecomastia of the breasts, and there doesn't seem to be any spider nephi. We'd be worried if there were five or more, because that might, may be pathological. So now that you're lying down with your arms by your side, um, I'll just go on to having a look at your abdomen. So first of all, um, it doesn't seem like it's particularly distended. I'm not noticing any um, visible peristalsis or pulsatile mass in the abdomen. Um, there doesn't seem to be any striae, so stretch marks, um, or any abnormal bruising. In particular, I'm looking around the umbilicus um, for any bruising, so that would be Cullen signs seen in pancreatitis as well as bruising of the flanks, um, which is Gray-Turner's sign, also indicative of pancreatitis. 
Um, I'm not seeing any bulging abdomen that would be potentially ascites um, or any um, prominent veins, which would be uh, caput medusae, which would be present in portal hypertension. So moving on to examining the abdomen, first of all, if I could just get you to cough for me. <coughs> yeah, so it doesn't seem like there was a hernia that was um, elicited from that, so that's good. Um, I'll move on to feeling over your tummy now, if that's okay. Are you currently in any pain or discomfort? No. No, okay. Um, so I'll start off um, light and then go deeper. So tell me if you experience any pain or discomfort. Any pain at all? Yeah, so um, I didn't feel any abnormal masses anywhere. Um, there wasn't any signs of peritonism, so no guarding or rigidity. Um, and it doesn't seem like it elicited any pain either. I'll move on to feeling for specific organ now, organs now. So first of all, your gallbladder. Um, do you have any pain or discomfort here? No, okay, so I'm just gonna push any pain. No, and if you could take a deep breath in for me. Yeah, and so it doesn't seem like it elicited any um, pain at all, so that's a negative Murphy sign. Um, I'll move on to feeling for the liver. So I'll just get you to take some nice deep breaths in and out through your mouth for me on command. So take a deep breath in, and a deep breath out, and a deep breath in, and a deep breath out, and a deep breath in, and a deep breath out, and a deep breath in, and a deep breath out, and in, and out and in and out. Yeah, so I couldn't feel the liver edge, but I'll continue to cuss for the span of the liver anyways. So midclavicular bone. So it's gondol there. Let's grab a tape measure. And so the liver is approximately 11 centimetres in its span, which is less than 15, which is considered normal. Okay, um, I'll now move on to the appendix. Um, so do you currently have any pain or discomfort here? No, so that's negative for tenderness and discomfort at Bernie's point. Um, if I feel on this side, do you get any pain where I was just before? No, so that's the negative rust feeds. And if I let go, any pain? No, so there's no cross tenderness and there's no rebound tenderness. Um, I'll move on to do a few specific signs, if that's okay. Um, so first of all, um, if you could just uh, stay as you are, I will bend your knee. Okay, and then I'm just going to push this inward. Tell me if you've experienced any pain or discomfort when I do this. No? Okay. So that would be considered a negative obturator sign. And then I'll just get you to lie onto your um, left side for me. Yeah, and just relax. Keep your knee straight for me, okay? So I'm just gonna pull your knee backwards. Tell me if you feel any pain or discomfort. Anything? No, okay. So that'd be considered a negative cell sign. Feel free to lie back onto your back. To the spleen now. So similar to the liver, I'll just get you to take some deep breaths in and out through your mouth for me. So deep breath in. And deep breath out, deep breath in, and deep breath out, and deep breath in, and deep breath out, and a deep breath in, and deep breath out, and a deep breath in, and out, and in, and out, and in, and out, and one more, and in, and out. Yeah, so I couldn't feel for any obvious splenomegaly. So I'll just get you to now uh, go on to your right side. Yeah, and then I'll just repeat that process. So if I could just get you to take a deep breath in for me. And out, and in, and out, and in, and out, and in, and out. Yeah, so once again, no obvious splenic medley, so I'm going to lie back down. Um, and last bit, I'm just going to tap over your rib on the lower part. Um, I'll just get you to take a deep breath in and a deep breath out for me again. So, when you're ready. Yeah, 
So I could hear the sound go from um, more resonant to dull and then back to resonant. So that would be considered a positive Castell sign for mild splenomegaly, but I have to correlate that with the rest of the clinical picture in order to figure out if there's something going on there. Great. Um, I'll move on to your kidneys now. So I'm just going to blot for them. Any pain or discomfort in the back at all? No. Okay. Nothing? Good. Yeah, so no obviously blottable kidneys, so that's always a good sign. Um, I'll feel for your aorta in the centre. Yeah, so the aorta was purple in the centre, but further and further away, couldn't feel any more. So there doesn't seem to be any sign of a triple A, which is good. Um, I'm going to percuss over your bladder. Yeah, so it doesn't seem like there is a distended bladder at all. Um, and I'll just have a listen to some of your bowel sounds now as well. So bowel sounds were all normal and present, um, and there weren't any aortic breweries or any renal breweries either. Um, I'll move on to assessing for ascites. Um, so that's just basically um, fluid within the abdominal space. Um, having a look at your abdomen, it doesn't look particularly distended, but we'll assess for it anyways. So first of all, I'll just cast from the top. So it was the same sound all the way, but if I were to hit dullness, um, if I could just get you to lean slightly onto your right for me. Yeah, and ideally I'd hold, let you hold this for about 30 seconds to a minute, and then I'd assess again. So the sound was the same the whole entire time, and after you've moved onto your side, it's still the same, so there doesn't seem to be any shifting dullness, which is good. Feel free to lie back onto your back. So now assessing for edema of the lower limbs. It doesn't seem like there's any pinning edema of the lower limbs. So I would also palpate the hiatal orifices as well as the testes and also perform a PR exam. But I think for today that's enough. So thank you so much for your time. Um, I'll be reporting back my findings to the GP or doctor. Um, feel free to put on your shirt.